Hi again, welcome to another edition of the Petty Podcast. This is podcast number four. And what's our title today? A little bit of fun. It's entitled, I'm Falling and Can't Find the Ground. And what we're going to be talking about are those little particles and how long they stay in the air. Have you ever seen uh, 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 dust uh, as the sunlight shoots through a window like you see in these uh, photographs where if you um, look up and there's some dust in the house or the building you're in, it'll look like it's sort of dancing in the sunlight. Well, that visible dust is on the order of 50 microns. These microns are a unit of measurement of what the diameter is. And that 50 microns is... 500 times smaller, I'm sorry, that 50 microns is 500 times larger than a COVID particle, which is on the order of 0.1 microns. So just imagine if you see those big ones dancing in the light and how long they stay suspended. Imagine how long the little guys can stay suspended. Just to give you a perspective on different sizes of different particles, as I mentioned before, um, visible dust is on the order of 50 microns or larger, Um, whereas the thickness of a human hair is about twice that thickness. It's about 100 microns, maybe a little less. Some people say a little less. Some say around 100. That compares to the thickness of a single sheet of paper, which is on the order of 100 microns. So the human hair thickness and the thickness of a sheet of paper at 100 microns are about a thousand times larger than a um, COVID virus particle. So you can imagine how small they are. That's why I call them the small guys. So remember the little guys versus the big guys that I've talked about in an earlier podcast. The big guys are the droplets, and they're the particles that are greater than 5 to 10 microns. And the little guys are the aerosols, what we call aerosols, and they're less than or equal to 5 microns. Remember, the COVID is 0.1, so it's an aerosol, and it's certainly less than 5. It's, it's on the order of 50 times smaller than that. And, and I'm here to tell you, as I've said in earlier podcasts, that the little guys are more prevalent and they're problematic because they stay suspended for a long, long time, and they're able to reach in deep into the lung where they, cry, they create havoc. I want to mention that you probably have heard over the last year or so, um, you hear from CDC, remember we had to wipe surfaces. Everybody was running out of these uh, um, disinfecting uh, towelettes. You couldn't find them anywhere in your stores. Clean those surfaces. And while I'm here to tell you that it's not a bad idea to clean surfaces, that wasn't the primary problem. Then you hear droplets, 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 droplets. And, And again, Uh, In my opinion, that's not the issue. The primary issue is the aerosols, the little guys, not the big guys, the droplets. And um, the reason those terms have been conflated by our public health agencies, the terms droplets and aerosols, they're both particles, granted, but the aerosols are the ones of more concern. As far as I'm concerned, it's always been about the aerosols, and I've been saying that for well over a year. Just to give a perspective on uh, the cross-section of a human hair versus a micron, and remember that the COVID is a tenth of this micron size, the white circle with the black ring represents the cross-section of a human hair, and the little red dot represents a micron. And remember the COVID is one-tenth of that little red dot. And so in terms of area, the COVID particle is 40,000 times smaller in area than, than a uh, cross-section of a human hair and about 1,000 times smaller in diameter, a human hair versus a COVID. And I always ask people about when they wear their masks, I said, do you think you can get a human hair past the side of your mask? 
Well, almost certainly you can. And remember, the COVID is a, has a diameter that's a thousand times smaller than that. If you're wearing facial hair, you certainly can get hair by the side of your mask because it is between your skin and your mask. So you can imagine that you've got a super highway around the edge of your mask where it's not sealed, where these little guys, the COVID particles, can come in and out. Just to illustrate this, this is yours truly wearing a uh, Spirit Airlines mask. And I, I must tell you a real story. Um, when the COVID first hit and I was traveling a lot on Spirit Airlines back and forth between Florida and Ohio, uh, there were almost two times where I was wearing a half-face respirator that I was not allowed to continue on the flight because they told me that I had to wear a mask. I could not wear a respirator. Now, you can imagine as a certified industrial hygienist how insane that sounded to me that I was to unprotect myself and wear this mask as opposed to a respirator. But that's, in fact, what the flight attendant and pilot told me twice. We finally compromised, and he had me stick this mask inside my respirator. We can all comment on that later. But what I'm trying to illustrate here is that on a mask, you always have a gap on either side of the nose below your eyes and significant area. And you also typically, and I, you can see I'm trying to wear this mask pretty tightly, on the sides, you see that little triangular space, and there's one on the other side as well. Those gaps are certainly large enough for me to slip a, a human hair through them. And if that's true, the little virons or COVID particles, which are upwards of uh, 0.1 microns or 1,000 times smaller, certainly can run in and out of there. And here we have a rather complicated uh, plot, but it's, it's uh, information on particles, different types of particle sizes and how big they are. And this comes from ASHRAE. Remember, I, I mentioned that I was part of ASHRAE. It's the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers. And this plot has been in their fundamental textbook for, for decades. And across the top, it has different sizes of particles from hundreds of a micron to uh, uh, nearly 40 microns. And you'll see the viruses are on the order of, uh, of uh, less than 0.1 microns. So the value I've been using of 0.1 would seem to be conservative. But the other, uh, and that's in the uh, circled box to the left. But the other box I've circled is a box to the right, which is the size of asbestos particles. And they run from a little less than a micron up towards 40 microns or so. And so on the order on average are around 5 microns or so. So they're about 50 times larger than the 0.1 COVID virus, the value I've been using. And I asked my friends, would I ever, as an industrial hygienist, be allowed to protect asbestos workers with a mask for particles that are 50 times larger than the virus? And of course the answer is no. So why the heck are we trying to protect people with masks with particles that are at least 50 times smaller? Good question. One of the issues uh, that I want to talk about is um, the fact that these small particles stay in the air a long time. So the question that I asked myself about a year ago was, how long would it take these 0.1 micron uh, COVID particles to fall roughly five feet to the floor in still air? And there's an equation called Stokes' Law and it's, it's an age-old equation in engineering and industrial hygiene that looks at what the velocity is of small particles, those particles less than 100 microns. Um, and so if you know the velocity then you, and you have a distance, you can calculate the time. In other words, if a particle fell one foot a minute and you wanted, and you wanted to know how long it took to fall five feet, then five feet divided by one foot per minute would be five minutes. So the equation is rather simple, actually. It's a constant times the specific gravity of whatever the particle is, and for COVID it's about 1.42, times the diameter squared of the particle. And remember we said that COVID's around 0.1. So let's do some math. <clears throat> um, if you look at droplets, and the reason I'm less concerned about droplets, and the droplets, remember, are around 5 to 10 microns and larger. Um, the time to fall five feet ranges from uh, a tenth of a minute to 10 minutes. So they fall pretty quickly. And that's why I've said they're of less concern because they just fall right away. 
Um, and this, ins- this, of course, assumes still air. You know how it is if you walk through um, sunlight with dust particles and you move them, they just sort of dance around. So we all know that if we stir the air up, stuff's going to stay suspended longer. So this is in still air. Now what about the little guys, the, the aerosols? Well, they really fall slowly. So here, just to, to uh, illustrate, I've looked at particles beginning in the aerosol range at 5 microns at the bottom of this chart to the range that I've been using for the size of the COVID particles, which are circled in uh, this green, uh, around 0.09 to 0.12 microns. Look at how long it takes for them to fall, 46 to 59 days. That's a long time, and that's in still air. So, you know, if you're in an indoor space and the ventilation's poor, and somebody has been very, very sick, in aisle four, and you walk by there a couple of days later, those aerosol particles will still be in the air. And they can be re-entrained. And so you have no idea of knowing whether or not you're walking through those particles or not. But, but you know from this chart they could still be there for a long time. And so the only real way to protect people is through engineering controls, to loot them or destroy them. And certainly wearing the mask is not going to help. So, as I like to close my podcast, I always say, remember, personal protective equipment is the least desirable way to protect people. And again, masks are not PPE. And as I've said in an earlier podcast, the COVID particles are mostly small aerosols and not droplets, which means respirators, not masks, are needed to protect you. And if you can imagine particles floating around for days to weeks, how effective is the six-foot rule? I see those little dots in stores, and I call them the dummy dots because only a dummy would believe that things that can float for that many days would stay at six-feet distances. Uh, unfortunately, the public hasn't been trained on or informed of this information, and uh, I think that's that's a real crime. The smarter, smaller particles, of course, are the biggest concern because they, they get right past the PPE and they can reach deep into the lungs where they cause havoc. And my message over and over again to all of you is going to be the real solution from an industrial hygiene standpoint under the hierarchy of controls was to dilute or destroy them. Again, I really appreciate uh, you listening to this podcast. If you have any questions, feel free to write. My email is below. We appreciate you watching. Wish you the best for today. Have a great day.